Okay, today's demonstration is how to create a cast shadow under a basic shape. So, true holds for um, your sports object, basically the cast shadow, um, although the perimeter of it look, might slightly change, a cast shadow is a cast shadow. Um, this isn't my example, this is actually Kelly Brogan's, um, and I was just kind of impressed of how she went above and beyond with her cast shadows, showing like both directions. Um, the sphere isn't really competing with the cast shadow here, even though it's both stippling. If this step under here was the same as the step on the tabletop, you would lose the form, and you don't lose the form there. Um, here she's got like the two overlapping cast shadows, beautiful. Um, this is an example of a very specific light source that's coming from over here, okay, from this direction. Your cast shadow should be on the opposite side of your step one. For instance, if you look at my demonstration um, from period two, my cast shadows here and here and here are really minute. Why? Because look at my lamp. My items are in front of me, they're right here, and so the light is shining like directly in the face of my objects. Like here's a step one, here's a step one, here's a step one. And look at how tiny my cast shadows are. Okay? So, how do you get a cast shadow underneath an object? Um, I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> is make sure you have a good drawing of that object. Circle. Cube. Notice my light searching lines. Cylinder. This is, I've got one of the tall block cylinders. Okay. And we aren't going to shade in pencil. We're going to shade with Sharpie marker. So, you got to identify where your step one is. On my sphere, my step one is right there. Um, and I can see that there's cast shadow underneath and around my sphere. Okay? You have two choices. Um, one choice is you can stipple. As long as the bottom of your sphere isn't the same step, value step on the value scale, as underneath your sphere, um, your form will look good and it won't separate. An if you're concerned with that, another thing that you can do for your cast shadow, oh, let me get some. And then gradually blend out. If you're concerned about your, that cast shadow competing, you can create hatch marks. What's the difference between hatch and crosshatch? I don't know. Claudia. Right. Hatching is just lines, not crosses. So. Those lines, this is the most important thing, those lines need to be parallel to the top and the bottom of the page. We don't want our sphere to have a beard. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Be very simple. And you can fade out. It looks kind of cool.
parallel to the top and the bottom of the page. Um, what would not be successful, using a back of the paper, here's my sphere. I get this a lot in art survey. It's like radiating light. This sphere just has to shave. Do you see this? So that isn't, yeah, it's a very f sad sphere. Okay, so see the difference? That's how we create the illusion of a flat tabletop. This is how we create a beard, something fuzzy, uh, even worse when a student's in a hurry and then it's sort of like <laughs> radiating sun off the bottom not so good okay um, <laughs> uh, what do you do for <coughs> a cube what I would suggest and I'm gonna actually move my cube so I have interesting light what I would suggest is that you draw it out first. So draw out in pencil, please, what that cast shadow looks like. I just moved my cube so I didn't have like the same light source as I did last time I drew it. And then stipple under here. Again, if you prefer, you can use hatch marks, but always lines parallel to the top and the bottom of the page. and work your way out. Now you, I'm assuming, because your seat is the same, you know, that you're light source is going to be the same for each item. Um, I have a light source where I can kind of move these things around and give like a different light source if I want to. I prefer that you work on the flat section of your table which is restrictive as far as where your light source is coming from. There. Then you're going to erase. Okay, right? Um, always have a little bit of ink, whether it's from your, the decoration on the side of your box, or your side of your shape, or whether it's the cast shadow underneath your, your shape. Did anyone see the difference that that made when I just made those few dots under the right side of that cube? It really gives it a sense of weight. So, um, I'll do one more. My cast shadow. This is what my cast shadow for my cylinder looks like. And, like, I'm going to be honest, I'm a pretty lazy artist. So let's make some hatch marks here because it's faster. Um, what's easiest? Um, I would say stippling is the easiest. What's the fastest? Hashing. Always create your hatch marks parallel to the top and the bottom of the page, even if your cast shadow is at an angle. And then if it's hatch marks, you're going to gradually fade off. And then just look at the bottom of this cylinder. Look at what happens. You got to shade right up to that cylindrical line, unless the verticals kind of outline something. But look at what happens when I just kind of create a broken line. See that sense of weight I have there? Now it looks like it's on a tabletop.
big difference, right? So, give that a shot. If you have your, um, oh, period two, that's not period two. If you have your, your item with you, and your name isn't on this list, please add your name to the list and what your item is. Um, and I'm going to come around and give demos while you add your cast shadows. I don't even know which one I should leave out for you as an example. I mean, that's like amazing. I like hers more than mine because you get angles. So Kelly Brogan, if anyone's friends with Kelly Brogan, tell her that she's like my star. So what is, what's the goal? Um, oh yeah, that's right. We a sister. Um, so if, um, so what do you do? What I'd like you to do is complete your cast shadow successfully. If you mess up on your cast shadow, just draw kind of like I did, um, another drawing quickly and show me that you know how to do a cast shadow. For instance, this is practice. I'm, I'm just looking that you, to see that you can create an illusion. I'm not l necessarily looking for a complete composition where you get everything on the right shot, on the first shot. So if you ended up with like what looks like an oil spill underneath one of your items or it just doesn't look right to you, then feel free to just draw another simple shape and then show me there what your cast shadow looks like. Put your name on it, please. Rip it out and then put it in the turn-in bin. And tomorrow morning, it, you'll have a grade in Genesis. You'll have the opportunity to revise. And, um, and these will be in your folder. So see if you can take today to put in your cast shadow. You saw how quick that demo was. It's probably about five minutes. And that's it.